Down, down, the sun is going down. Let's go into the town and burn it to the ground today. Welcome to another episode of the Monster Guys podcast, and Michael, this is a very special episode because we are announcing our Halloween in July event, and I guess we kind of teased it a little bit already, but we're officially saying to you, we are going to have a Halloween in July around here on the Monster Guys podcast. Yeah, I think the the conversation on Twitter, I think it was yesterday, kind of let the cat out of the bag, and Chris from Werewolves in Siberia has been really looking forward to this, I guess. But here it is, guys. We're not in July yet. It's just a few days away. But this episode, we wanted to share a little bit about it. We also have a story for you that's relevant to Halloween tonight and a little bit of discussion on that story. So, you know, normally the Monster Guys podcast will do an episode where we have a discussion or interview a guest, and then we'll have a couple of story episodes. This one, we kind of merge those ideas and do so in preparation for Halloween in July. I don't, I'm not sure if this happens in other places around the world, but here in the U.S., uh, a lot of times corporations, businesses, offices, groups of people will get together in July and have what's called a Christmas in July party. Uh, they'll dress up as Santa or reindeers or whatever. They'll decorate their <laughs> office, give away gifts in anticipation for Christmas. I've even known some offices to crank the AC down super cold so they kind of get the feel for being in wintertime which I'm all for. Crank the AC down by all means. <laughs> Especially during this season. Yeah. It kind of marks, you know, a little bit of a halfway point to Christmas. But around here, we like to celebrate Halloween a little bit more. And so we decided that around here at the Monster Guys HQ, we wanted to have Halloween in July instead. More appropriate. More appropriate, more fun, and more interesting, in my opinion, on a lot of levels. So we are going to have Halloween in July. We've got several very cool topics to discuss and dive into, uh, and we have several guests that will be joining us. One guest, uh, Richard Martin, the Fear Merchant, will be joining us for each of our episodes for a little bit. And then we have some other guests, Icy Sedgwick from the UK, Matthew Meyer from Japan, and possibly another guest from another part of the country yet that will be with us during the month, intermittently talking about the different topics from their own cultural perspective uh, or their own country's rituals or celebrations or observations uh, for the month of Halloween. So we're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be some really, just like some of these interviews we've already done, some really fascinating conversation. And I'm excited to hear some of the things that our guests have to share about their own perspectives and cultures, observations, and celebrations. I, I always feel more intelligent speaking to people like Richard and Icy and Matthew than what I probably actually <laughs> am. But <laughs> Well, I mean, I think it's just really cool to get into their heads and uh, see things from a different perspective, a, a closer perspective. And I think this particular group of people will be a very fun collection to dive in deeper with. Yeah, certainly. So also on this episode tonight, uh, we're going to have a story that we're going to share in just a moment. So it's kind of a, a, a hybrid episode for us where we have a little bit of discussion and a story in preparation for Halloween in July. Before we go much further, I do want to recognize a few people because here recently we've begun talking about our Patreon patreon.com forward slash the monster guys, where you can support us really just putting a tip in the tip jar and helping us as we create stories. We're creating some exclusive content for supporters. We haven't been talking about it long, but in the past couple of weeks, we've gained some supporters. And we really appreciate that because the further we go and the more we grow, and for instance, May and June have been some of our biggest months ever on the Monster Guys podcast in terms of growth and where we're going. And I foresee that it's just going to get bigger and better in the coming months, which I'm very excited about. But one of the things that we've always wanted to do as a part of our dream here is 
try our very best to be commercial free. Even if we do sponsorships or something like that in the future, that it would be relevant to what we're doing or people that we're trying to support or highlight instead of just going out there and doing like some podcasts do and pulling in sponsors or commercials. And um, not that there's anything wrong with that. A lot of people do well with that, but that's just kind of not what we're about. So one of the ways we try to overcome that is... Uh, or have tried to overcome that is by starting our Patreon page. We also write books and we have a couple of other things that we have out there in various forms that help us to pay for some of the stuff. Our Patreon page is pretty new. And like I said earlier, we've only just started talking about it. So in the past few weeks, we've had a few people join up and help us out. And I just want to say thanks to those people for backing us up and becoming patrons uh, at patreon.com forward slash the monster guys. It's a tremendous help. It's really encouraging from our fans to see that you guys are out there and that you care about us. Yeah. So let me just say thank you to a few people who've joined this month. Aaron B. Thanks a lot, dear friend. Isaac, who Isaac I know is also another fellow author and I'd like to talk about some of his work in the near future because I've been reading and listening to some of his stuff and it's really tremendous work. So Isaac, thank you for uh, supporting the Monster Guys. Charity, what a cool name, by the way. Uh, But thank you so much for supporting the Monster Guys on Patreon. And uh, the last gentleman that's joined, John, John K. I just want to say thank you to you as well uh, for putting that support in the tip jar. Really appreciate it. You ladies and gentlemen really kind of made our month. Uh, Starting this off, we really didn't know what to expect and we haven't done a lot of promotion and we've got a lot more things coming for Patreon, especially in the latter half of this year, which are super exciting, including bringing back one of our secret projects from last year that we actually pulled off the shelf because we didn't like the way it was really being packaged and delivered. So we decided to pull it down instead of moving forward with it, even though our focus groups and everything else was just super positive. We felt like we were sitting on something that was going to boom. It kind of broke our hearts, but we pulled it back and said, we need to figure out a better way to deliver this. Well, hint, hint, we're going to repackage that and offer it through Patreon as some of our reward levels. And I can't say what it is, but it was a very special project for us that we worked almost two years to prepare for, got it ready, started to launch it, and then just said we didn't feel good about that particular aspect. So we feel like this is a great place to go with that. So that's one of the kind of interesting and and cool things that we'll be doing with Patreon later this year, in addition to some other things. So those of you who are with us Right now, from the very beginning, thank you. It means so much to us. And of course, to everybody listening, downloading the show. Like I said, May and June have been some of our biggest months. And it just means the world that you listen and you support us and give us the opportunity to share our stories and discussions on some pretty fascinating topics along the way. So thank you. It's uh, it's really cool to do this. It really helps us carry on as well, and we we truly appreciate it, and we'll keep on bringing you guys cool content. Yeah, absolutely. And so Halloween in July, that being said, we'll also have a couple of Patreon-only surprises in Halloween in July, but we'll also have a couple of giveaways. And these are not just going to be little bitty giveaways, you know, a picture or a book or something. (laughs) It's going to be a whole box of interesting items. Matter of fact, it's going to be two whole boxes of things that we're giving away uh, for signing up for our newsletter, joining up as patrons on our Patreon page. There'll be different ways that you can uh, get your name on that list and get your name on that list multiple times. Throughout the month, we'll show you some of the things that are going to be in that box or those boxes but it's going to be pretty cool. We're going to go retro with some of it, some old VHS movies that we've put our hands on, some other trinkets and items and books and artwork. It'd be like one of those subscription boxes that you get that you're really excited to get in the mail and want to unbox. Uh, but we're going to do it as a giveaway, two of them this month with two different themes. And we're very excited about that. You can go ahead and start if you want to get your name on the list. Uh, just go to themonsterguys.com, sign up for our newsletter on that newsletter tab, and um, let the fun begin. Uh, okay, so one of the fun things that I'd like to see happen throughout the month, and we kind of already started this with Richard Martin. 
the fear merchant, send us your pictures. <laughs> Those were some crazy pictures too. <laughs> yeah, send us your pictures of you in Halloween costumes from the past. Make them appropriate. I don't want to see anything that I don't need to be seeing. But uh, send us your pictures of you in costume or or somehow celebrating Halloween, your, your jack-o'-lanterns or trick-or-treat bags. Or if you're like us, uh, you put up a Halloween tree during the month of October. We give gifts at Halloween. Some of them are tricks. Some of them are treats. We'll share more about that later uh, about some of our own family traditions at Halloween. But if you have pictures at Halloween from past, um, share those with us. We'd like to retweet them or repost them and talk about them on the show. Just have a little bit of fun there. As we stated earlier, Michael, we also have a story for this episode uh, just to have a little bit of fun. And this is relevant to Halloween a little bit. (laughs) More than a little bit, I think. (laughs) Um, So take us into this story, Michael, because you rewrote this story from an old legend. I did. And uh, we talked a bit about this last year in our last year's Halloween episode, but more along the lines of the Will of the Wisp and how the Will of the Wisp and the Jack-O-Lantern sometimes share a similar origin story of sorts. So without going into too much detail and giving everything away, we're going to tell the story tonight about Stingy Jack and how he tricked Old Nick. And this is based on the old legend of Stingy Jack, which is kind of an old, I believe, oral tradition um, from Irish folklore. Yeah, it's a cool story. So let's jump into that right now. Stingy Jack and how he tricked Old Nick. Please, food, warmth, something, something to help me on my terrible journey. Jack listened to the old beggar man with a sense of obligation, but quickly grew bored. He had already said no several times. After all, he could hardly provide for himself at the moment. How would he be able to board the old man too, even for just one night? Fine, fine, here, take this. Jack stepped back into his room, closing the door in the man's face, and used his smithing tongs to grab a glowing ember from his blacksmith's forge. He carried it back over, opened the door, and dropped the coal beneath the beggar's feet, which caused the older man to jump back in fear. Take that. It's hot, and it can light your way in the darkness. Now leave me be. Before words could cross over the beggar man's stuttering tongue, Jack shut the door in his face, harder, with more finality this time. What am I supposed to hold this with? The beggar cried from the other side. Jack growled, grabbing a half-eaten turnip from his table and opening his door just enough to toss it out. He listened to the beggar man grumble and shuffle off, and then looked in the corner, past the forge, where his collection of alcohol had been drained dry. He was so thirsty. Putting on his best coat, which, truthfully, wasn't much, Jack combed his appearance down as best he could. His eyes fell on a silver pendant, a cross on a chain, on his mother's side of heirlooms. He picked it up, wondering how many drinks he could purchase with a small piece of genuine silver. Jack walked outside, hoping the beggar was long gone, but he was not. The man had proven to be smart, having carved out some more of the turnip and placing the coal inside, causing the light to shine forward more brightly and conserving heat. You, he said to Jack. May God have judgment on your soul. Your greed weakens you, and your stinginess makes you a burden. Ha! And yet, here we are near my house, while you cling to a coal for warmth. Tell me, who is the burden? Who is weak? Jack left the old man behind, heading to the pub. It was his favorite pub, not for any atmosphere, of course, but for the fact that it was cheaper of the three pubs nearby to drink even if it was the farthest one to walk to. Jack slunk into the small, seedy den and passed through its meager crowd on his way to the bar. The bartender, who was with another customer, eyed him wearily, the man's thick mustache twitching at the sight of Jack. Suddenly, a roguish fellow appeared on the stool beside him. He was unnaturally small and slender, with a wicked crookedness to his face. Jack knew the man, as he had spoken with him at his doorstep on more than one occasion. Hello, Jack, 
said the ugly little man. Nicholas, and how are you on this fine evening? Very well, very well. What are you having? Jack opened his mouth to speak, but stopped. He had an idea. Nothing, he said. I'm out of money. Old Nick laughed. You? Stingy Jack, you're out of money? Pinched that last coin so hard it disappeared, did you? Oh, what I wouldn't give for a drink right now. Well, the little devil said with a glimmer in his eye. I could do you one here. He moved his jacket open a little to reveal a large, red flask. None of your horrible drink. I prefer the whiskey of this bar, thank you very much. Old Nick scowled. Mine's better. Yours is poison. No, I think I'll have what he's serving, thank you, said Jack, gesturing with his chin to the bartender. And how are you going to pay for it? asked Old Nick, broke as you are. I, began Jack, hesitating purposefully. What about that offer you made me once? Old Nick's crooked smile reached halfway to each ear, a visage even more frightening given that his eyes were bulging from their sockets. You'll take my offer then? I'll have that wretched soul of yours. How about this? If you make yourself useful and become the coin from my drink, you can have my soul. I'll do you better than that. The devil waved his hand, and there, on the bar, appeared several gold coins. Jack's eyes danced over the currency, but he only toyed with one of them, trying to appear unimpressed. So does that mean the stories aren't true? You can make coins, but you couldn't turn into one yourself. Of course I could, said old Nick. I could turn into anything I want. No, I don't think you could. That must just be an old wives' tale. Watch me, said the devil, and he stood on top of his stool, which didn't change his height very much, and he suddenly began to shrink. Soon he was no more than a gold coin, the biggest and shiniest of gold coins in front of Jack at that moment, and Jack, without waiting a breath, snatched the coin off the stool and stuck it in his pocket next to the silver cross. From inside his pocket, he could hear old Nick start to scream, Let me out! It burns! Let me out! Jack covered his pocket with his hand as a few eyes turned his way. The bartender came over, begrudgingly asking, What will it be? Still deciding, said Jack, still able to hear the whimpers from within his pocket. The bartender's mustache twitched once more before he moved away from Jack. Can't get out, can you? asked Jack. He let his hand up a little. Dirty deceiver, shouted old Nick. You tricked me. That's a lot coming from you. Now here's how this is going to work. You can still have my soul. That was our deal, right? Old Nick became silent for a moment, but for the whimpers of pain and discomfort. Right. But you can't have it until ten years' time from now. That's not what we... Jack put his hand back into his pocket pressing the large coin that was old Nick into the silver cross. He could hear more screams, practically feeling the vibrations run up his arm. He let go. Ten years from now, do we have a deal? Fine. Old Nick's voice was hoarse, defeated. We have a deal. Jack took the coin from his pocket, setting it on the stool next to him. In a blink... Old Nick sat there again as himself, small and ugly, now with an even uglier scowl on his face. Look on the bright side, said Jack. Ten years for me is a blink for you. The bartender circled back around. Make up your mind yet? Whiskey for me, said Jack, and a glass of whatever my friend here would like. Old Nick shot Jack a withering glare. The bartender eyed them both down as if they were the worst of criminals, and, in a way, they were. As he left, old Nick spoke up. Stingy Jack, the name serves you well. You're a rotten sort. One day, that rotten soul will be mine. And so Jack lived on God's green earth for another ten years. This decade spent much like the previous decades of his life. He had taken the small devil's pile of gold coins and turned it into a small fortune for himself. Although he was ever known for being selfish and wicked, playing cruel-hearted pranks on his neighbors and altogether being of an intolerable nature. He knew, however, that his time was coming soon. 
and old Nick stopped by his forge to remind him of that fact giddily. Deciding he wasn't quite ready for that place down below, Jack went to work at his forge and started to make preparations. In the tenth year, Jack was walking along the path between towns one day, a large sack hanging from his shoulders with a hammer in his hand. He hadn't realized when old Nick appeared, but suddenly the little devil walked beside him, matching two steps to every one of Jack's to keep pace. Hello, Jack, the little devil said loudly when Jack hadn't said anything. Nicholas, and how are you on this fine morning? Wonderful. Today is the day, you know. The day? The day that your soul will be mine. Oh, right. That's good, Nicholas. All very good. Carry my hammer for me, will you? He nearly dropped the tool on old Nick's cloven shoes, forcing the little man to jump and catch it midair. First, help me finish a job today. After that, I'll go with you. Now Jack knew this path well, and he had chosen it for a specific purpose. He pointed to the apple tree he knew would be along the road. Let's stop here for a break. Old Nick growled. A break? You're stalling for time. Am not. It's mid-morning, and you haven't even started working yet. I'm hungry. Didn't eat breakfast. Old Nick screwed up his face, but followed Jack to sit under the tree. He took out his red flask, taking a heavy swig and offering some to Jack. Jack declined, digging through his sack. Blast it all. I forgot my lunch. Old Nick jumped to his feet. Well, if there's no food, guess we should get that job done so you can eat. Not so fast. I know you, you prince of lies. As soon as I finish my job, you'll take me to hell. I'm not going on an empty stomach. The small devil narrowed his eyes. Then he saw that tree was an apple tree. All right. How about an apple, then? Jack looked up at the tree, feigning surprise. Actually, an apple sounds wonderful right now. With a flourish, old Nick produced an apple from his jacket pocket. But Jack grimaced. No, nothing from you. You know I don't trust your food, or your drink for that matter. So very picky, old Nick exclaimed, tossing the apple into the grass. With a huff, he pulled his trousers higher up and set to work climbing the tree. Fine, I'll get you an apple from this tree and you'll eat it, and then we'll carry on. As soon as the devil was out of sight among the branches, Jack scrambled with his sack. Sounds good to me he hollered as he pulled several large silver stakes from his bag. Each had been fixed in the shape of a cross. Jack retrieved his hammer and began banging them into the ground in a wide circle around the tree. What's all that racket? The devil called. Oh, nothing, Jack called back. Carry on. But as the devil poked his head out of the leaves, he began to scream and holler obscenities. More effective than I thought, Jack said to himself, nailing in the final cross. Jack, you stingy old bastard, you've tricked me again, haven't you? You're right on that, Jack hollered back, nearly having to plug his ears to drown out old Nick's screams. Now, you know what I want? Another ten years. No, you cheated me once, not again. All right, I can just walk away and not ever have to worry about it. Old Nick's eyes grew wide as Jack started to leave the circle. No, wait, please! I can't leave this tree with those, those things in the way. Let them up and let me down. Jack turned back around, a smile on his wicked face. Ten years. Take it or leave it. Fine. Ten years. Satisfied, Jack hammered upward on the first cross, removing it from the ground. After all were gone, the devil slithered down the tree, leaving Jack without so much as a goodbye. And so Jack went on with his crooked, merry life, or at least until the drink overtook him. Five years later, after a particularly long and hard night of drinking, Jack keeled over from liver poisoning. He found himself in a cold world, much like the world he had always known, except more dreary. When he looked down at his feet, he was mortified to find his own body lying next to an overturned stool. He screamed and jumped away right through the crowd of onlookers examining him. Blast it, Jack said to himself in the frigid cold pub. I'm dead. The crowd moved away from Jack's body. I think he's gone somewhere else, said one of the examiners. God bless his soul. Hm, the bartender's mustache twitched. 
good riddance, says I. Jack's temper flared, but then he tried to think of a time when he'd ever been kind to the man. He couldn't remember. A light caught his attention outside the pub, blazing through the windows and the door, which creaked open of its own accord. Jack followed the light, thinking he knew what happened next. As soon as he had left the building, he saw them. The pearly gates. In front of them, an old man stood there, scowling at Jack. He looked oddly familiar, but Jack couldn't place his face. Is this heaven? asked Jack. No, answered the withered old man. He jerked his thumb toward the gates. That's heaven, in there. Jack looked on in awe, stepping forward. Where do you think you're going? Away with you, shooed the old man. But, but I'm dead. You're very dead, yes, I can see that. Doesn't that mean I can go to heaven? Stingy Jack, isn't that what they called you? You don't remember me, do you? Twenty-five years ago, I asked you for a bed to stay in from the cold, or food, or something to stay warm by. You gave me a single burning coal. From before that time and since that time passed, we've watched you. You haven't much improved. Your path is a different one from here. The old man held a hand out to the side, pointing to a path far off in the distance, one devoid of light. Jack shivered, the cold starting to get to him. It wasn't what he wanted, by any means, but perhaps it would be warm in the place below. He set to walking, soon finding himself on an even colder walkway, this one battering him with wind and sleet. It was dark. The only sounds were the inclement weather in his sloshing footsteps. When he bumped into the gates of hell, his eyes had been shut to keep the water from creeping in. Who goes there? cried an impish little voice. A slat in the gate opened and two red eyes peered out at him. Let me in, cried Jack. It's you, the owner of the voice hissed, and the slat shut. Jack could hear the demon on the other side running away followed by footsteps several seconds later. The slat opened up again, and Jack saw the crooked eyes of old Nick. The small devil seemed to be standing on the edge of his hooves to see through the gate. Stingy Jack, what do you want? I'm dead. Let me in. We don't want you here. But they won't let me in at the other place. Doesn't that make me your charge? Old Nick's eyes twisted up into their own sick smile. Not necessarily. You've tricked me twice on earth, Jack. I'll not have you down here to trick me and my ilk in our realm. Go back to where you came from. Find a home there. The slat shut with a loud bang, causing Jack to jump in fright. He looked over his shoulder at the cold, wet darkness. At least, at least give me something to light my way back and give me warmth. The little window opened up again and a hot coal and a turnip were tossed out, landing at his feet. Then it shut again. Jack's heart sank as he was reminded of the treatment of the beggar man so many years ago. He sat down, carving a space out of the turnip for the coal. Carrying his makeshift lantern, Jack wandered back through the horrible darkness to wander the earth, wanted in neither heaven nor hell. And as you may surmise, as he goes away with a carved turnip lantern, that is how we get Jack of the Lantern, or Jack-o'-lantern. Jack-o'-lanterns, one of my favorite traditions of the Halloween season. A great tradition, a very fun tradition, and one that we've always tried to do each year in our family. For those out there not familiar with the story or with where Jack-o'-lanterns come from, you might wonder why it's a turnip in the story. Jack-o'-lanterns were originally turnips before they became pumpkins, and we'll we'll talk about that, at, I'm sure, sometime in Halloween in July. Well, before pumpkins became Jack-o'-lanterns, you mean? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Because turnips were much more readily available in the old country, as it 
were. Um, but yeah, in, in the old oral tradition, Jack or Stingy Jack actually loved turnips and he loved to carry them around, eat them. He would actually be known for stealing them whenever he could as well. So it just kind of fit his character. You know, uh, we always... What a strange thing. To like to eat. Well, no, just to want to steal something that is so readily in abundance. Thus the name Stingy Jack. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, it, it's befitting of his character. And it's funny because this character is very similar, as we said earlier, to Bill or William, Will of the Wisp. It's a very similar story. Um, you know, a guy tricks the devil in Will of the Wisp's story. Uh, he tricks the devil three different times, and most of the time he's having the devil create these uh, enchanted artifacts, like a hammer that once you start hammering with it, you can't put it down, or an enchanted purse that never loses coinage. And inevitably, he gets the devil so worked up that the devil is himself enchanted by his own musings. Right. Here we see just a, a much more simple trickster who messes with the devil twice and basically traps him one way or another. It's almost the same story, but just regionally different, except it is two different stories. Two different stories and culminating into two different traditions mm -hmm. um, or legends, if you will, over time. Yeah. And I think these are most well known for being Irish folklore, you know, the jack-o'-lantern, the will-o'-the-wisp. But yeah. it's interesting, uh, while doing research into this topic, they actually can be found through Ireland and, of course, Scotland. But they're also in Finland and Germany and parts of Europe, uh, England. Mm -hmm. So it's it's interesting to see how far this story actually goes and how widespread its origins actually are. I think as Halloween became a more popular holiday for us, we kind of, and Samhain, of course, in Ireland, the origins became kind of centralized there. But it's important to remember that they, they do come from all over Europe. Yeah, so a fun little story to get us in the mood for Halloween in July. And there'll be a lot more discussion about the jack-o'-lantern uh, the Will of the Wisp, and uh, some of those traditions, among many others, over the course of the next month. So get ready, because we're going to have a lot of fun with those discussions, with our interviews from a few people in different countries about Halloween traditions, and uh, we're just excited to bring this to you. So a couple of giveaways, just some fun activities, send us your photos, all that kind of good stuff, and we're going to have some fun. And hopefully, doing Halloween in July will help you cool off a little bit mentally from the hot temperatures outside. I mean, heck, it'd be nice if we could cool off not mentally, too. Yeah, cool off physically. You know, the other day I mentioned that we were in the triple digits. I think I put that on a tweet or something, that we were in the triple digits here, and forgetting that so many of our listeners come from the UK <laughs> and different parts of the world. And a guy messaged me back, and he said, we would just you know, basically have a nuclear meltdown because over here we, we go off of Celsius. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was funny because, um, I'm always thinking Fahrenheit and yeah, a lot of people that we talk to think in terms of Celsius. I'm not sure if this is correct, but I guess 40 degrees is somewhere around 110 for us. So it yeah, is so. quite a difference. <laughs> yeah. So it'd be like, truly like being in hell, uh, in the triple digits or dead. And it was also interesting talking to Matthew Meyer in Japan, who was telling us that now it's just starting to get hot over there. We'll learn more about this in our conversation with him on some of these topics in July. But it was kind of funny because he said a lot of the same type of things we do at Halloween over here in the U.S., they do during the month of August in Japan because it is a semblance of cooling down. Yeah, And it's family gatherings and different things to help people mentally deal with the hot weather. Yeah, I enjoyed him talking about that part because, you know, a lot of, and we'll, again, we'll talk about this more with him, but a lot of Japanese yokai and a lot of Japanese traditions are puns uh, verbally. They're named as a pun. So right. the idea of cooling off by getting a chill from a horror story, that's actually really funny. Yeah. And I guess... You hit the nail on the head with your, your idea to cool off the summer with Halloween more than we realized. Yeah, so it's going to be a lot of fun. There's a lot to come, a lot of very intelligent conversation, a lot of silly conversation, some stories to tell. So Halloween in July, folks, is just a few days away. Get ready. We're going to have some fun. Dig up those old pictures of you in Halloween costumes or your jack-o'-lanterns or your decorations. We'd love to see them. And also for those of you who wait till the last minute to get your costumes ready, this is just a good, friendly neighborhood reminder to go <laughs> ahead and get started. 
on uh, those costumes. Guilty as charged. I know a lot of people start talking about it in like January, February of what they want to do. And now today with cosplay culture so big around the world, you would think people would be working on Halloween costumes all year long. But I still know so many people that wait till like <laughs> October 30th and a half before they start working on their costume. I mean, it's a tradition in itself at this point. <laughs> I guess so. So go ahead and start thinking about your costumes if you aren't already and getting your supplies together will just help you with some fun topics along the way through the month of July. Thanks for joining us tonight. As always, you can find us at themonsterguys.com on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just look us up at The Monster Guys. We'd love to hear from you. Send those pictures. Sign up for the newsletter. Even if you sign up this week before July starts, if you start signing up from today forward, I'll put your name in the hat for those giveaways. And we'll start revealing more about what will be in those boxes in the coming weeks. Hope you enjoyed the story. And uh, we look forward in just a few days to starting to celebrate Halloween with you in the month of July. Good night, everybody. Good night. Downtown, the sun is going down. Let's go into the town and burn into the